episode of Strictly Broken Brews. I'm your host Christian Jarbacha and today I've got with me a special guest who can introduce himself. Um, oh god, the joke sounds really bad when we have to do a retake, so I'm just gonna cut the crap. Uh, this is Machi Punnett from Top Tier Tears. Uh, I'm hijacking this video because uh, UA just like plays Vanguard now because he's a shitter. So this is Top Tier Beers and uh, we're going to be talking about rewrites, which is one of the de facto top tier decks right now. Uh, it's not quite as popular in Japan as it is in the US, which is remarkable to be honest, but uh, it's a super powerful set that's um, it's won a regionals in Germany uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's taken plenty of places in the tops in trios and in Neo Standard for Japan, and it's all around just a cool set that has a surprising amount of depth and variety. Uh, we have a few lists uh, prepared. The one I think we're looking at now, because we're not screen sharing, because haha, uh, internet is uh, the. So Dortmund we're going to start with the Panthers list, right? Guardian. Oh, are we? Cool. Okay, let's go with Panthers Guardian, which is uh, the deck that um, is quote unquote my baby. Um, so you guys can look at all the card effects because if we take too long with our explanations, my internet's going to die, and then everything is going to go to shit. By the way, I'm, so I'm just going to assure you guys rewrite it. that on the other end is actually a human person, not a robot, despite what it sounds like. I look forward to hearing what I sound like because yeah. you've really set up set me up with so much hype. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, Re Revise has got um Revise got the best level zero in the game. I don't think that's really arguable. Yellow Chain Chronicle is the only deck that could possibly take that title. It's got a runner, it's got a Ricky, it's got a costless plusing card, and it's got some other utility stuff. The most notable card here that is not necessarily an auto include is the Zero Zero Lucia Amagi, which taps to give power to a character and is also um an Amagi effect, so pluses and stuff. Uh, the notable part about this is it's not a staple in all Japanese decks. They have been using it more as of late. And the reason I've always uh, held on to this card in the deck is uh, because it turns on your 1-0 Gloves event, which is, in my opinion, one of the strongest... This The Gloves event and its bond are one of the strongest combinations of cards in all of Y Schwartz right now. It enables early trifields. It enables... Um, well, you get to ditch climaxes with it, you get to bond back a very useful action card, uh, and it, it's just an all-round great plusing engine. Gloves itself is fantastic, but of course needs Lucia to activate, and this is the de facto best Lucia back row. If you are going to talk about the 1-1, one -one, then I'm, I'm very sorry for you, friend. Very, very sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, the zero zero Lucia is the clock bond and it has a clock so pan fix. Uh, and the other thing that's not in every list, but you'll start you start seeing it m more and more, uh, is the Chihaya brainstorm. Like Japan was mostly playing just the Chihaya brainstorm and not the Amagi. And uh, sometime along the line, like the West started incorporating the Chihaya brainstorm too into their builds. But yeah, I, I think I think at this point, uh, Chihaya brainstorm is standard in every deck. Like, um, you won't see a deck without the Brainstorm anymore simply because it fixed too many problems that the deck without the Brainstorm had. Uh, I would know. I just did frantically. I tried to make the Brainstormless deck work a lot, but then I just decided, no, Brainstorm's better. And I put in, put in three or four, however many. Yeah, it just helps you set up during the mid and late game because you don't really get to set up that well otherwise. And the Magi actually just gets worse and worse as the game goes on, so the Chihaya Brainstorm just replaces her, basically. And the loss of power isn't that bad, because she assigns 500 in a level, and your 3-2 backer assigns 1k per level, so it's actually similar power level for the 2-1 than if you were playing the Magi in the back. It's like 500 power less. Um, yeah. Um, yeah and and, uh, Don't run into anti change counters, though. Yeah, that's important, actually. Uh, and there's also in this list a copy of the 00 Shizu, uh, which is top check 2, and like on attack, you can mill the top card. If it's a level 0, you can summon it to back row. Uh, sometimes you see this card, sometimes you see an exchange bomb, sometimes very rarely you see both. Um, 
It's a card that uh, allows you to go very, for very the, Yeah. It's a card that allows you to go for the bar combo thing with your level three, which is very risky because you need to like you basically go neck three and then you need to top check and if you miss the top check you just went neck three for nothing. And if you hit the top check you so, um, the, the you thought process the thought process behind comparing this to a level to a two one, which I'm sure maybe confusing to a few people is this is the one card slot you dedicate to beating Vivid Strike, which is a pretty abnormal deck. Uh, the bar combo beats it, as the and the bottom deck bomb does a decent number on it, as long as they're not going all in. Oftentimes, people, well, Vivid Strike players will try to go all in, um, not knowing that most people don't run the anti change bomb, which is when you do your bar combo and force them to either spend like six stock or spend some ridiculous amount of stock on calling their back row or lose all their characters and neither of those is a very good proposition for, vi for a vivid strike at all yeah uh, level one is usually very streamlined just a level one combo and usually one copy of the uh, one zero lucia that hand fixes so that's like on plate check top two add one ditch one um it's an extra yeah, discard can, out and fetches back want, but, um, I play one because I have one copy of the game PR, and I like having matching arts. But um, jokes aside, that I play one because of space. Yeah. Um, is there anything else at level one? Um, I don't know if it's actually like pop. If anybody else actually, probably people tried it, but I tried playing the one one event that searches a climax. Uh, to like better enable the ones the double one zero combo play. Because that's when you're most likely to win the game if you actually get to resolve uh, two times. She's uh, she's combo two times. But the issue with that is that some specific circumstances need to happen for the one one event to actually be good. So they actually eventually ended up cutting it. it. Because either you you already drew yeah, a second stock soul, or your one zero she's rules didn't survive, or you don't draw the event anyways. It's just. It didn't end up working out as well as I thought it would. Though it's an option you can consider. Because it, like, theoretically makes the chance of making your power play higher. Yeah, and then, fair enough. Uh, look, by far, I've, I've been, the, the whole bar deck is centered around not using Kotori. And as a result, you get to use probably the best level 2 in the game at the moment. Uh, the other contender, I guess, is the Sunshine Rico, but I think this card is better. Um, this is, uh, people call it Garbage Bag Lucia for obvious reasons. Uh, it's a 2-1 that is usually 12k. Your opponent can't ever counter it because it literally has the text. Your opponent can't use character counters, and therefore it will kill pretty much every early player that isn't exactly a plus 4k. So, in the current meta, that is basically only Fox. I don't think any others are actually played. Um, uh, and Darkness isn't yeah, played, just, no. Yeah, it's probably just Fox. And no, like, the, 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 the Symphogear one, that if they resolve the Climax combo against 3k at cross turn. Oh, true, yeah. If um, people play uh, the mostly Subasa deck, shout out to uh, Butts and Coconuts, uh, then yeah, I guess that comes into play as well. But um, well, I guess this deck just has a middling matchup against that to begin with. Unless you can, like, counter their combo. Or even, no, they've got Mark right, don't they? Yeah. Anyway, this beats on 95 plus percent of level 2 games, and most opponents will have absolutely no recourse. The only decks I foresee being an issue are, well, uh, this waveform, I guess. <laughs> There's not, not a lot else. Uh, like, and uh, I haven't even mentioned a part where if you play a climax, this card will try to blind stock when it reverses something. So, uh, in case you didn't, in case you didn't have enough awesome effects on one card, this unassuming little uncommon is one of the best cards in the deck once again. Yeah, it just allows you to fight for level. It basically allows you to fight at level two against every deck in the game, more or less. And there's not really a lot of recourse you do against it because most decks uh, dedicate their level two slots to like something that beats level threes. But those cards that beat level threes can't actually beat level twos because they only get power against level threes or something. So this just sticks around 
for a cheap investment cost. God, it's insane. Yeah. Anyway, you'll notice that even though we don't play pants, um, there are court stories in here. Uh, like, the reason I'm saying we is because this is pretty much exactly my list. I play an um, anti change bomb over the 00 Shizuru device. This is the list that me and, uh, and uh, Tom kind of built, I guess. People I didn't put on. It's court stories here because she's a blue, blue experience target. That's more or less all. If you ever want to get three Shizuru level threes at level three with consistency, then um, you preferably want all four to be in the deck, and therefore gettable by brainstorm. So, Kotori is a great experience target. She's a heal if you need a fifth or sixth heal. And yeah, we don't aim to use the combo at all because I think it is pretty overrated. Uh, although, like, that's only because I think this deck is one of the few that can win via compression. And Kotori completely ruins that if you try to play more than one at level two. Yeah, uh, Kotori not only like goes against your compression game plan, it also basically disables the two one Lucia, and it also disables. Uh, well, it disables your end game because you have less stock uh, to actually use on Shizu burns at the end. And also because Kotori is very likely to not die, that's a slot that Shizuru can't go in unless you overplay, which is like that that messed your game plan a little bit. And uh, look on that note, I think it's a no, go on. Uh, and one other thing is that Kotori actually needs to mark her blue card from waiting room for her climax combo. As you can see, the deck right now plays seven blue cards. Like it would be eleven. Okay. Uh, I'm actually not sure, does she need, does she need to mark her character or just any blue card? Um, it's a sorry, Yeah. So that's another issue you have yeah. to like take into account when you want to play Kotori. And the other level 3s are just mm -hmm. 4 Luciardi plays and 4 Shizuru's. The Luciardi plays why you actually have to play for experience 6, because it's the only card with experience. Uh, and it just makes your field at level 2 a lot bigger, like actually threatening. And then at level 3 it makes your Shizuru's actually threatening, because they're like 13k base, 16k in center, if you have two supports. So that's pretty hard to deal with. I think the last card that, that um, might be interesting to talk about is, uh, is the bar, actually. Oh yeah. Uh, you might think that the bar is here for the combo, that is um, completely wrong. We don't play the bar for the combo, we play the bar because it allows us to play a, um, a climax after your stock so uh, with slightly more frequency. And because in a deck that aims to uh, compress, the bar is the best climax to trigger because by the very definition of what a bar does, it is the least likely to force climaxes into your stock because you need to have a, a climax directly under the bar. So. All in all, it's a plusing um, trigger that usually gives you clean stock, usually gives you like a way to uh, push soul with your one soul beaters, because you don't play the like that sometimes very often this build, you are, are fine playing one soul beaters and attacking for two, two, three, or two, two, two. And it is an, um, it's another way to reliably uh, activate your Amagi, I suppose. Um, my pants does a lot of this as well, but it strands a pants in your stock which is problematic. And additionally, if you are stuck at level 1 without a um, stock soul, then having bar is much easier than having pants because it, it means you don't have to soul rush with two colours, one of which you play very little of, um, and can you know, just play the other bar and keep up in tempo, if not in card advantage. Yeah, well, you're, you're, and you're also just more likely to have the bar than the pants. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, we can. Uh, on that note, I think we can talk about the alternative, right? The pants. Yeah. Um, we already see some differences here because he's only playing three Ricky and three of the clock bond. I think three Ricky is actually not that uncommon. Three clock bond, I think, is. I'm not sure. Yeah, definitely four clock bond. I don't care about four Ricky, honestly speaking. Four clock bond is what you need. Yeah. Some people argue that you shouldn't play four and four because then you'll be quote unquote clocking yourself too much. But these optional effects, people like, just, just, yeah. just calm down. Um, the notable absence here, like the actual notable absence, is uh, runners basically. 
you've got two plus and double zeros in the Shizuru with knives, but that's like significantly less guaranteed than the runner. And while the physical of knives has some late game like late game use, I I think that if you're playing a level zero and late game with Shizuru up uh, with uh, with from um, Guardian and you're not playing the bar combo, then you're either doing something extremely specific or something went wrong very badly. Yeah. Uh, and something else is he's playing the drop searcher. Which I guess is mostly for the blue fix because you need to blue since he's playing the quadrate You combo. need it, yeah. And you yeah, can it's see... Pretty, pretty much mandatory. Yeah. And you see the same thing happening at level 1 which is like something a lot of Japanese lists do is just play one copy of the clean cut Shizuru uh, which can save a character. Uh, I, I, I really don't like this card that much. I don't like this card that much in this specific deck because what very often ends up happening is that you just have a full field. So you actually can't really properly use yeah. this effect. Uh, since what it yeah, does is... Um, in order to, like, well... Yeah, when it reverses you rest the character and move it to back row. Which you can't do if you have a full mm -hmm. back row. Like, um, you can't just hold your brainstorm. Like, this build plays four brainstorm, which means you can basically um, hold it. And then you can have the uh, Lagi in the back row, so you can gloves. And of course, this effect is active on the opponent's turn, so if you glove something, and then it, um, you can save something else. Or, like, you can move something in the back row to preemptively save it, and that's kind of cool. But it's more cute than anything, and it's a one of, so. Like you can make cute plays with this, but I I think that you mostly just have an, have this as an extra market target for Kotori. Yeah. And then at level two, uh, he's also playing the memory kick counter and the anti change bomb. So he actually this deck runs both the anti change bomb and the zero zero top check thing. But he's playing the zero zero top check thing mostly as a marker tar um, yeah marker target and as a somewhat passing level zero and not actually for the bar combo because he's not playing the bar combo. So this like the anti change bomb is actually his slot devoted to beating vivid strike. Yep. And uh, actually also uh, the memory, memory kick. Is, yeah. Yeah, the memory the memory kick does do well against vivid strike. Yeah. It's also very good against golden bargain, so that makes me. But either way, um, memory kick is broken. Look, uh, everything else is pretty standard. Um, what I do think is a bit strange is that he's gone for four and four blue level threes. Yeah, no, I usually three. see four of the Lucia and then three of the Shizuru um, in the Japanese lists. Yeah. I think that this is fine. It's a little greedy because it means you have to hold on to the Lucias rather than ditching them more freely. But uh, you need this in your clock for experience at some point. But um, you usually only get one to cheer down, so playing three is fine. It just means you need to yeah. draw two instead of playing two out of three instead of two out of four. Yeah, playing two three is kind of greedy. Like I was starting with three, and then you just you end up realizing that since you needed a clock, you just clock the one you draw, and then you have a hard time getting another one. But with the brainstorm, you can usually just find the second copy, so it ends up working out. But I think, yeah, the other way around of having 7 blue and 4 green is more common. And the rest of the deck is just basically the same with stock soul and pants. And the deck just ends up playing very differently in terms of how the game plays out because you have like Kotri at level 2 and try to get like a damage lead there. And Shizuru finisher is actually like, more of an afterthought. And yeah, which I, I like. I understand how powerful Kotori is. She's a very crazy tempo swing. Uh, but unfortunately, I think that the turn after you play Kotori, you've got a pretty awkward turn, especially if your opponent's going for a compression game plan. And once you hit level three, she's a very is without a doubt the best level three to play in this deck, and possibly one of the best level threes in the entire game. So I think missing out on that is a the notable drawback. Um, I guess we can like talk a bit about how rewrite stands in the meta. Uh, oh well, it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we talked 
uh, on the last band list we talked about how rewrite is quote unquote the de facto S tier set if Kmono makes a splash. Kmono kind of made a splash and kind of didn't. It's like yeah. uh, it's still a thing that people talk about when building decks. Yeah. But it's not a big enough force to warrant playing rewrites and not considering other decks. Yeah. I still think that with that without that, like ignoring that, rewrite is still a quote unquote top tier deck. It's best um like it's sorry, it's worst matchups are the decks that have the pew 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 endgame that threaten to end you uh before you can survive and hit back with your Shizuru's. Uh so Gochi used to gotten the new suit. Um I must got well it hasn't actually gotten used to it, but since it's so quote unquote one dimensional, uh, people will fear to play it because if you ever run into Kimono Friends, your chances of winning are terrible, whereas Gochus can still put up a fight. Actually, yeah. actually, I think Idolmaster is in a better position just because you have like Ami and Jupiter yeah. and stuff to do. And like yeah. your, your level one is better in IMS than in Gochus. But like you, both, think, both decks don't really want to run into Kimono. Um, but oh, like, so yeah. I think you under underrate free state compared to like army and stuff. Army is so whatever. Uh, but look, with with those decks and like, I guess we can talk about like kaleidoscope and those vivid strike. Yeah. I mean, vivid strike has to fun, but um, it, it it could happen. And um, attack on titan, which uh, like, I'm not sure if attack on titan can actually break over. The wall. Consistently, yeah. like I know it's possible. I know it's possible, but I don't know about consistency. Anyway, um, those are probably its worst matchups. Uh, I don't what? really think that. Sorry. One other weak point of the deck is definitely level one, and then by level one I mean if you yeah. run into decks where people set up a huge level one uh, during first. Uh, yeah, when they when you get to level one first and set up a huge level one, and then you just have to decide whether to side or ram. Into them. I mean, that's a fair point, but um, you're also talking about the deck that runs four clock bombs, four rickies, and runs. yeah, of course. So if if there's a deck that hits level one first more consistently, that isn't uh, like some shitty go neg Madoka or fate deck, then I zero can level it. zero. This, this deck is <laughs> a very frequent play with this deck is to literally go turn to clock bombs, clock bombs, and then. Swing, swing, swing. Um, yeah, it just happens like sometimes when you trigger stock soul or something. But um, yeah, I mean, if, no, you, no, if you play I'm against, is, yeah, if you play against the decks that can pull up. That's not a play you make. Uh, like, I, I feel like I broke up there. But anyway, my point is that even though it's common to try field with this deck. You can very easily just not try field and hit level one first by forcing your opponent to attack him, uh, and as a result, you can control it so easily. Uh, who hits level one first, and that includes making your opponent hit level one first. So whether you want to get them off balance by knocking to level one when they're unprepared, or you want to hit level one first because you're afraid that you're going to have to awkwardly side their walls, you can decide. Like you, you can generally pick with this deck. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess the point I wanted to make is that if you end up in a situation where Shizuru's can't profitably front, which can happen, uh, you start getting into the situation where the deck is at its most vulnerable, uh, because it's in its first deck, it's not compressed yet, and that's where it can actually eat a lot of damage. Because the Shizuru's aren't very powerful yeah, on attack, so if you're playing against like something like Red, Red Blue Rezero, where they have pucks that are just 7-5 on defense, you're kind of in an awkward spot because you can't really side because then you're dealing no damage but if you crash you open yourself up to like falling behind so that's a way to attack the deck against those decks you, against those decks you tend to rely on the brainstorm more like you yeah. hopefully get to level one um so you hope you get to level one first you save one maybe save one row with gloves let the other two die hopefully brainstorm one back and then like Chump attack and um, kill their Amelia, and if they have an Amelia, if they only have Pox, then whatever. Chump attack, and once you hit level two, just kill the Pox with those two ones. Yeah, uh, and I guess the last thing is that this deck is somewhat vulnerable to losing to itself. Not as vulnerable as like 
I don't know, Kaleidoscope or like LP before it got the Brainstorm, but like if you miss Toxel, the deck still has a really rough time. Which most decks do if they miss the level 1 combo, but especially this deck. It's like a step higher than most. Yeah. So it's kind of like... Um, I think it has a rough time. Yeah, there's a rough time if you miss the climax, yeah. um, but uh, it's, it's not completely an unwinnable, like, uh, say, LB might be, or I guess, Puyo. Yeah, the 2-1 like, Lucia, like, if, if you miss Toxo, like, the Kotri version actually just dies. Uh, the Bar version uh, has the 2-1 Lucia to fall back to, and 2-1 Lucia can sometimes carry you back. Yeah, it would sometimes. Uh, the end game is strong enough that that might be able to happen, but I'm not convinced. Yeah. Like, it, it can call me by itself. I do think that all these cards, uh, if you if your game plan is executed, you have one of the strongest non-interactive game plans in the game, and it's really simple and really powerful, and it's difficult to misplay intensely or like significantly. Yeah. And that's part of why I think the deck is just straight up one of the best tournament decks in the game. You can't screw up with it. Uh, in a very bad way, unless you decide you want to like splash red for the new Chihai or something. <laughs> really uh, I think I saw this like that. But yeah, let's not oh, talk about the coin flip lists. No, not not even the coin flip lists, like the actual like guardian lists that splash Chihai. I think I saw some on Twitter back when this uh, set came out. I mean, that's a nice experiment, but if you just look at the cost of all of your finishes, <laughs> you'll yeah. know that they're just not compatible. Um, it, I think it was just because they played gate, wanted to play gates, and then they were like, well, let's throw this in. You could okay. legitimately just play gates instead of pants and play like the bar version we talked about, yeah. and that would be better than actually splashing for Jihaya. Yeah. Uh, I guess, do we want to talk about coin flip? It's not really necessary. I, I also don't think it's as good as other decks we could talk about anyway. Like, yeah. it's almost certainly worse than KKK. It's, um, it's probably worse than um, Gaia. As I don't think it's worse than Gaia. Thing. Gaia, Gaia is just. Gaia is, Gaia is a crazy high roll deck. Though. Like, if you if you high roll with Gaia, uh, it doesn't do anything at level two, and it doesn't it really does. do things at level one either. It has a good level zero. If there and that's was some way to fit, yeah, if there was some way to fit the Lucia um, clock bond into Gaia's level zero and like the whole game um, without completely disrupting it, and there is no way to do that, I've tried. Then <laughs> it might be a good deck, but unfortunately, it can't play this stupid busted card. And as a result, it's like uh, get hit to one, go to one zero, hope your two two stick, and then probably lose because your finishes suck. I guess if you want to like hear more about KKK and the, or let's call it the rise and fall of KKK because people thought it would be the right deck to play instead of Guardian, uh, you can watch like what's I don't know about people. I think I think it was just me. No, no, I think it was multiple people. Like definitely on foreign back then, it was still foreign. I think. Because like yeah, minus, two soul, think minus two soul, minus two soul, and. Minus to soul and uh, heal on an early play just sounds so broken if you just think about it on a baseline level. And if you don't think about the implications yeah, of what it has for future turns. Yeah, I and remember KKK. translating on foreign going, wow, this card is stupid. And KKK was the obvious home for it. Um, and that deck just didn't work out. It didn't have enough advantage, didn't have enough stock. Uh, it could try to soul rush, but it wasn't very good. And in the end, the best KKK deck is actually just a stupid Kotor Plants deck with like uh, um, using things like the um, Kagari type of Tsubo instead of the actual Kagari combo. Like it, it, it was a bit depressing. Uh, yeah, I guess we can just wrap this up then before we actually break up again. Well, hopefully you recorded it. What? Hopefully you recorded this time. Yeah, uh, well, let's check that. So, um, yeah, signing off, and actually, yeah, uh, what, what I still want to say is since, like, VGP season is over, uh, I'm thinking about what kind of sets to do next, and I'll include a poll in the description, and I'll just do whatever you set cannot, gets the most votes. What? You cannot. Everyone vote for Kenon. No, 
I mean, I, I mean, if people want to see Kanan, I can do Kanan, but like, I'm not sure if people actually want to see that. Uh, we'll, we'll like find out when it comes to it. Like, I'll leave the poll open for like a couple days, and I'm not sure if I'll do it this week or starting with the week after. Uh, I'll figure it out, but like, I'll do the future sets based on what people want to hear. Okay, so actually signing off now. And I'll let Lychipana chill for whatever he wants to chill. Chill? This is top tier beers. Why would I chill for something that's already ours? Okay. Top tier can't.